Hi, darling. Hey. <laughs> this is the, um, the first video uh, that we're doing in the studio. Um, we're doing, going to be probably doing a lot more of these now um, because there's nothing else to do. And um, I'm still working and still getting lots of stuff done. And I'm uh, sitting around a, a bunch of stuff, uh, projects in Moscow. So we thought we'd do some, some talking through of processes uh, from the beginning of a painting to the end of a painting. Um, I shared a lot of stuff online uh, with the underdrawing and putting the first layers of oil paint on the canvas, but I haven't really spoken much or done much at all about the, the bit before that. Um, so, you know, you've got the gessoing um, of the canvas, uh, which, I, which I don't know how much everybody knows about that, because sometimes you can actually buy um, canvases that are pre-gessoed, um, and work straight onto those. But, but what does gesso mean? Oh, gesso. So, so it's a way of priming the canvas uh, prior to uh, putting a ground on. And so uh, you, I, I use this very bloody expensive stuff, uh, annoyingly, because I would love to use just, <clears throat> I'd love to use cheaper stuff, but uh, or, or actually mix it, you can mix it yourself. I used to, but then I got lazy and I just wanted to just get on with it. Um, so this is uh, incredibly uh, expensive Lasco gesso, and you mix um, a tiny bit of that in with that. This is Structura, it's another Lasco product. God, it's disgusting. Um, and you basically um, mix those together and water it down, and you mix it in a big old tub Mommy. like that. That's my son, Hero. Hero, we're doing filming. Um, <laughs> What's that, dude? I can make a baby sister. That's really lovely. Thank you. And so, once, once you go on, Hero. Sweetheart, give us a sign. Right. Um, <laughs> so, sorry about that. Uh, the, um, the gessoing. So, what I normally do, so it's all watered down uh, to a nice smooth uh, consistency with both the gesso and structura, having a big tub uh, with lots of water, and I brush it on in one direction across the canvas, uh, let it dry, and then sand that down, and then brush the opposite way on the canvas, let that dry and sand it down. Keep repeating that process for God knows how many times. I don't know. A lot of times. A lot of times, a lot of times. <laughs> until you're happy with the surface. Some people prefer more of a tooth to work on, it means a bit more of a raw canvas sort of uh, feel to it. I prefer to get it as smooth as I possibly can. And then what I, I tend to do is uh, distress it after the fact uh, to make it kind of look a bit rough, uh, which is bizarre, but I, I like to do that. Um, but so, so it has a rough appearance. However, when I want to do fine detail in, in the, you know, the face and you know, detailed portrait, then I can achieve that and I don't get annoyed by the rough surface. Um, anyway, so I, once it's gesso to um, an inch of its life, uh, then I put on a ground because I don't like working straight on white. Um, I, I see a lot of that online. I don't know why, but it annoys me a lot. So explain um, what a ground is. A, a ground there uh, is uh, like a mid-tone, usually a, a, a skin tone. It's usually built up, uh, the colour's built up with um, uh, earth tones, um, earth hues, and you know, you've got like ochres, umbers, you've got... Um, So you've got these are these are the various basic earth tones. So you've got a, a sienna there, you've got an ochre there, and you've got an umber there. Uh, I find umber to be very useful when building up uh, this this ground there because it's uh, it's very neutral. Um, and then you can warm yourself or cool it down. You've got you know you can bring a bit of um, cadmium into it, perhaps cadmium red. Or you can go into a, a sort of a blue colour, you know, like an ultramarine. Um, <laughs> if you're going to lift them up, let yeah, us see I know, them. I know. I just didn't really want to get too much into that. Um, <laughs> so uh, once you've once you've uh, mixed that, and you mix it with um, make it a tint. So you use a white. I use titanium for the strongest white, and uh, you mix um, those colours together. So you end up with a mid tone. So I don't know. Let's have a look. So this has already had a. a mid-tone uh, put on it, a ground, and now I've got to the distressing bit, which is later. But, so you've got this as a, a mid-tone, um, which is sort of quite yellowy. Um, you can start off quite light, and then you've got this that I 
flip this over the top to, to distress it. So that's um, using a see-through um, pigments. And so I'm just going to get to the, the transparent pigments versus uh, opaque pigments. And so that's an interesting thing. Um, usually on a lot of these uh, paint tubes, uh, you can see there's a little square. And this one shows that it's half opaque and half uh, transparent, so a translucent uh, sort of density of pigment. Now you've got other ones that are completely opaque and completely transparent. So there you go, there's, that's an ochre and that's completely, yeah, it's completely opaque there. And then you can see that one is completely transparent. And so this one would be ideal for a tint but if you wanted to glaze or do a wash of something that was transparent, then something that was more tra uh, a transparent pigment would be ideal for that. Ultramarine is also a transparent pigment. You've got, uh, you know, for, for glazes later on in the process, I've got um, Indian yellow, which is a perfect um, yellow for a, a transparent glaze. You've got um, uh, like a quartz type magenta, which is uh, incredibly good, but that's oil paint, and get, we'll get to that later. Sorry, this is a table, and it's very, very messy at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's when I get into my oil painting. I, I was just gonna say also, I, you know, I use acrylic for the first layer um, because it's so much quicker. Um, I used to do a ground in in the oil, and you had to wait for it to dry, and you had to wait, you know, several days. Um, if you want it to dry properly, before you need it to be completely dry before you work your next layer on, you see. And you're s supposed to, when you're working in oil, um, to uh, it's it's flat over lean, so you can only start use it, you know, adding um, uh, extra oil and, and various other things to the process later on. You're supposed to just start with turpentine, so that's the lean. Um, and so it was really annoying, it took me ages just for beginner painting, so now I just use um, water-based uh, paints to start with. You can use tempera or acrylic or anything um, like that, just to make sure you've got a, uh, something on the canvas prior to putting your first layer on, or even doing your underdrawing, which will be the next step, it'll be the underdrawing next. Um, and so what I do is I put the ground on, and then I get into distressing it, making it look a bit more... Uh, fucked up and a bit more interesting, um, and then and then I I start the underdrawing, and so that's that's where I've got to. I'm halfway through the distressing process at the moment. Um, but funnily enough, also I, I work on paper, so that was that's if I work on canvas, and and so I do a similar thing with with paper. So I stretch pa paper um, and and uh, size it. Um, that's the wonderful thing about paper; you don't have to do any gessoing. You can just size it. Uh, after it's it, it's wet and, and put on the board with this uh, gum arabic tape, um, and then I do a similar thing after it's sized, which means sizing paper means um, it stops uh, the paint permeating it completely because if you paint directly onto paper, it will just spread and won't be captured properly. Um, but if you size it, it will actually just stay on top of the paper, and that's what you want. Uh, or some people might not want that, but I want that. Uh, especially when you're working with oils, it tends to just go and, and it loses its saturation very, very quickly. And so uh, you, uh, once it's sized, you put, uh, I do a similar thing with the distressing, uh, go straight on with um, uh, my ground uh, sort of uh, glaze it, uh, wash colours to, to do this sort of weird effect. And then here's the underdrawing, which is the, the next step. Uh, which is, it looks a bit like that. Um, Let me see it close up. Yeah, sure. So you can see that what, what that um, underdrawing, oh, sorry, uh, that uh, initial paint there does is create a, a nice mid-tone to go up and down from. So you can go up into the highlights and down into the shadows. And so it creates a nice sort of solid um, idea of what you want to do when you, when you work on top of it. Um, and then here's a piece of paper that's been uh, sort of started the painting process on, um, and that's the sort of layers of oil paint on top. And that would have gone on top of one of those underdrawings. 
Um, and yeah, so that's that's where I'm at. So this is the first time that we've done this. Yes. Um, feedback is welcome. Oh yeah. So if there's anything that didn't quite make sense or anything that you would like Ben to address. Yeah. I don't know. I'll send him an Instagram message. Yeah. He loves it. I'll try. Yeah, I'll try and look at it. <laughs> Uh, so, who are you again? Ben Ashton. Yeah. I'm an artist. <laughs> Say bye. Bye. <laughs>